All right, so I kind of want mine to be a little bit more discussional because I've got a few sort of specific proposals and I want to hear what people have to, uh, to say about them. <coughs> um, so basically, obviously, we've all kind of encountered uh, censorship. I think Facebook is kind of a primary uh, spot that that's happened. And I think one of the biggest issues is the fact that uh, Facebook and the mainstream media kind of own the narrative of why that happened. Uh, so myself, my page wasn't actually removed, as I talked about earlier in the day. Um, on the day of the Facebook purge, uh, many of my videos were marked for removal, and then Facebook actually sent me a note of apology, putting them back up, which is uh, really bizarre. And I think my understanding of that is that I was on the chopping block, that basically Facebook was on the fence about deleting my work, and it seems like they ultimately mostly didn't. But we have sort of the slow issues of uh, marking individual videos or uh, content as spam, uh, the slow sort of demonetization, uh, basically things to push people off of the platform or to make it impossible to monetize our content, of course, all leading up to the possibility of hard deletion. Um, one of the first issues that I've kind of identified is that uh, when somebody is taken down, that's exactly when their voice needs to be the loudest, right? So if anti-media or free thought project is taken down, their audience needs to know that that happened, but they're mostly, uh, you know, not able to report on it as far as Facebook is concerned because the Facebook is gone. Uh, on the other hand, Facebook is out talking to the Wall Street Journal and the mainstream media and saying, well, we just took down this bot, this spam page, this Russian page, whatever. And Wall Street Journal basically shares that press release in an article format, and they are more or less just posing it unchallenged, just this is the way it is. Uh, they don't reach out to the actual content creators who were censored and ask for comments. Um, to that end, I think we all have uh, remaining platforms when one of those things happened. If we have uh, 50 different uh, people with different sorts of indie media platforms and one of us is deleted, I think we all need to actually stand up for that person uh, who was just deleted or censored because they don't have that voice in that exact moment and we need to work to get that voice back. Um, so my, my idea is that we need to be able to own that counter narrative. This is sort of information warfare. We have to realize that uh, the state is inherently sort of behind the fact of the censorship in the first place. It's Facebook out of fear of regulation or at the direct uh, sort of order of the state that they're doing the censorship in the first place. So when one of our sort of comrades in the independent media is censored, I think we need to actually get their take on it. We need to create a counter narrative so that that Wall Street Journal article that says, oh, these spam pages, these indie news pages, fake news pages were taken down, we need to actually do reporting on that person. So the first of my kind of few uh, ideas is that I'd like to sort of unionize in the sense that uh, we're all prepared for when we are censored that we do stories on that censorship and, uh, and share that. To that end, I think that a lot of uh, the criticism of the independent media tends to come from the idea that it looks unprofessional, that it looks bloggy, uh, that it doesn't look like it's kind of organized in a way that uh, is up to par with mainstream media. And I think one thing that could help sort of unite it uh, would be through something like the Associated Press, but with uh, respect to independent media specifically. So something like a National Association for Independent Journalists, right? It doesn't have to be a formalized corporation or a nonprofit, uh, but it might make sense to have some kind of a uh, body that, uh, that stands up for independent media and is the result of all of us together with some kind of a board uh, and that basically people can promote and talk about uh, when one of our uh, you know, people is censored or whatever the exact issue is standing up for the independent media in general. Um, my other idea is that I think that we could probably benefit from having some kind of an independent news wire service, right? If people would have the ability to see the independent reporting kind of all in one place. I think that a lot of people who are familiar with the work of maybe a third of, uh, uh, that a third of us do, they'd be interested to see what the other two-thirds of us are doing. Um, I know that we have the uh, creator of Minds.com on, on Zoom here with us. Um, Google has uh, you know, their Google search engine, their YouTube, which has the, you know, the videos. They have Google Plus, which is theoretically social media. Um, it seems like Minds is kind of, kind of coming about as the independent alternative to Facebook. Um, I would suggest that either through Minds or through something else, but it would be cool to have this occur through Minds, would be an equivalent to Google, the service that Google has called Google News. So in addition to just searching for a situation just on Google search, it actually has a specific news tab uh, where it designates what it considers to be a valid news page. 
uh, for myself, it let me apply to be uh, eligible on Google News that news to share content uh, would be counted on that. Uh, you're able to apply every 90 days. I did that for three years before finally now news to share content appears in Google News. Um, but it shouldn't take that long and it shouldn't be that difficult. I think it would be cool if we had a service like uh, Google News that uh, compiles the independent media where when something happens, people are able to search and see what is the independent media saying about this. I think in particular to foreign policy, uh, the mainstream media tends to have a clearly pro-war uh, slant, whereas the indie media does not. And I think there are other situations uh, and other sorts of policies and issues uh, that that would be true of as well. So to that end, I would love to see something like uh, maybe a wire service or a Google News equivalent on Minds, uh, or maybe it's something that we compile uh, in our own website form. Um, so I'd be interested to see what people's responses are to that. I think one of the problems is that we're all fiercely individualistic, that we all have our own outlets, and to that end it's kind of hard to even get uh, so many of us in one room together, or the idea of collectivizing anything is a little bit difficult for us. Uh, but I'd be interested to see what sorts of responses or ideas people have. I love that idea of like if one of us gets si uh, silenced, then we all try to speak up for that person. Uh, the only thing is right now is that we were all silenced and um, I think that uh, so we, we have no platform to put that out on but uh, Joe at the Minds Unleashed is actually coming pretty like he's, he's coming around and he's sharing all of our stuff and letting people know that these other pages work for us, which is pretty helpful you know and I think that that's helping some of us get our reach back and, and um, but that's definitely had we done that from the beginning for the last few years when we were getting the censorship and we'd attacked it a lot harder from the beginning it would have uh, I, I don't know if we'd be in this predicament that we're in right now. Had we been banding together like that and, and pointing out the censorship of one group over another group instead of charging forward with uh, with our own ideas. And they, like you said, we're all individuals here, most of us, you know, and, and it's hard to form a collective out of a bunch of individuals, but I look at us now, we're doing it, and we're uh, our back's against the wall, and that's, that's the only option, I believe. Right, and in the case of Free Thought Project, actually specifically, uh, we did end up with the Rolling Stone article, which was awesome, but, uh, uh, Matt at Rolling Stone ended up doing a story that talked about what that outlet was and why that happened. Um, but unfortunately, that was kind of the only mainstream media attention we got to it. And most of the MSN that was reporting on uh, the issue of these deletions didn't really go and quote uh, somebody like Jason or you about why that uh, occurred. So I think we need to actually be prepared for it in advance so that we can get that, that counter story out quickly and that they'd be forced to actually contact uh, us and ask for comment when it occurs. Any other, anyone else with well, thoughts? I was gonna say, we have to be careful because Facebook is very aggressive right now, trying sure. to like locate and actually identify pages who are sharing other pages. And like, me and Nick have been doing that for years and they slowly but surely caught on to it. First they started to throttle it, but then they ended up just unpublishing our pages. And some people were affected by that as well, who didn't necessarily you know break their terms of service or whatever, but just because they're in association with us. So I would say it's definitely important, but Facebook is, I mean, they very easily change and, you know, rewrite their own rules all the time and they make them more and more arbitrary to the point where they can selectively, selectively enforce them. And that's what basically happened to us. And it seems to me that the co-admin status is the main issue, is when Before, people are admins or... Can you repeat the questions off the mic? Oh, all right. So uh, Jason made the uh, uh, point that basically... It, that what I'm proposing could be dangerous, more or less, uh, because uh, Facebook tends to remove one thing and then when they find out that different people are associates of one another, they end up censoring those people who are, who are friends to them. And that's a very good point, and it's basically why uh, so many people in this room were taken down in one, in one simultaneous instant uh, three months ago. Um, I, what I'm proposing would certainly not include the idea of co-admin status. Uh, I don't think it would be a good idea for, for us to generally be co-adminning each other's pages uh, in order to fight this, but rather that we sort of more informally have a community where we're prepared to speak out on, on behalf of one another uh, without it doing it in a way that would automatically trigger uh, Facebook, you know, putting you on the list, <laughs> so to speak, so for, for guillotining. <laughs> the next session when we all talk about this, try to find one like hub where we all can right. put in that information together where it's away from Facebook, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to that end, like I said, I think that having a professional title or organization for that, like my, I would, I'd be happy to hear other people's suggestions. But I think that something like the National Association for Independent Journalists 
uh, I think would lend some kind of credibility to to the issues that we're talking about. It sounds official too. It so. sounds official, right? Exactly. You know, so so when you're when you're censored and somebody and someone reaches out for comment, well, I'm a member of the, you know, <laughs> NAIJ or whatever it is. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the problems that we're facing is we're trying to work within the platform of the Facebook that is wholly owned by them. And I think one of the things that's important, like you said, we have the owner of Minds.com here. When, when my Sandy Hook Hoax Facebook page was purged, we wound up going over to MeWe. And of course, it never really garnered the, the strength that it once had. But if we, you know, if some of us are going to MeWe and some of us are going to Minds, To briefly summarize the comment, in case anyone watching online couldn't hear, it was basically saying that uh, in addition to Facebook, we should be kind of swarming over to one other agreed upon uh, alternative, and that maybe Minds is that alternative, especially if um, he's willing to take uh, suggestions on how to make Minds uh, especially appropriate for the independent media. Um, I would point out, though, that Facebook has a sixth of the world's population on it, right? It is hard to. Uh, reach out to new people if we're expecting people to show up on Minds. Uh, and my understanding is that Facebook makes it extremely difficult to cross post for Minds, where when you post a Minds link, it says, you know, basically, are you spam? Are you a robot? Are you sure you're not a robot? <laughs> um, so uh, I would still like to see Facebook be possibly uh, viable, but I think that Minds is probably a good alternative to do uh, adjacent to it. Yeah, because. You know, we don't want to turn it into an echo chamber, and a lot of the normies still are on Facebook and Google and Twitter, right. you know? And so, yeah, obviously, we need to have some kind of coordinated effort. I mean, they could delete our fans, they could delete our pages, but they can't delete the demand that we have. You know, if people have a strong demand for our information, they're seeking it out, uh, but we just have to be mindful of where we go and what that looks like. I, I personally, I like Minds a lot. It's decentralized, it's open source, it's got crypto, Integration, so you know, I think that's a great way. I mean, all of us here should have a Minds account at this point. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Are we, are we just trying to create an echo chamber? Are we actually trying to reach people and plant seeds? So, right. So I'll hand the uh, the mic over to Nick. Yeah, um, nice. But to anybody who's interested in kind of making those proposals go forward, I want to make sure that this event we actually do the stuff we talk about. We don't just have a great day, uh, you know, giving each other high fives and then not actually do the stuff, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So uh, Absolutely. if any of those three pro proposals sort of speak to you, uh, speak to me. Right on, man. Awesome. Thank you, Ford. Ford is fresh out of school, too. He's kicking ass. He's inspiration. 24. 24. Oh, yeah. 24. 24. 24. 24 years old, I was like, you want to come next? <laughs> Uh, and here's Nick. Hey everybody. Um, first off, I just want to compound a little bit on what um, Ford was talking about uh, as far as uh, creating kind of like a, a association for our media outlets and for other media outlets that would eventually join us uh, in the future. Um, it's an idea I've had for a while, and I've spoken to some, some of the people in this room about it a, uh, a few years ago, actually, I think about three years ago. Um, at the time, when I first brought it up, I think uh, people weren't really ready for it, you know? The, uh, the idea uh, didn't come to maturity yet, but now that we're all seeing this really like severe censorship and deplatforming and stuff, I think it's become pretty apparent that we have to um, begin to associate and formally join together um, to 
first of all, um, you know, create a, a just an, a professional association that can help represent all of us um, to the public and uh, to to offer counter narratives, um, and and also to pool our resources together so that we can have the types of services that these really huge companies who, you know, uh, as other speakers have mentioned, are basically being bankrolled by the MIC and uh, other special special interests and stuff like that. So um, I just, I, I, I really want to push for this. I think we need to come together with a media association similar to the Associated Press. Um, I think we can uh, combine that uh, and roll that in with a newswire. Um, you know, I'm, Ford and uh, Aaron, I don't know where Aaron, Aaron Ford and I, um, we're already on the board of an organization called G3 Media and we're already kind of proving that this kind of work can be done. We're doing kind of similar stuff on a small scale right now. I think in this room, uh, uh, the anti-media, uh, the Mind Unleash, and uh, Mint Press News are all working with, uh, or are, are getting service, service by uh, G3 Media. So we're already kind of proving that this works on a smaller scale. So I think uh, we can pretty much start scaling it up and maybe create uh, a new organization that is we all have representation in. Uh, I think I think the uh, ideal way to do it would be like a cooperative where each, each member of this organization will have like a seat at the board up to a certain point uh, so we all can help govern the direction of it. Um, I think uh, the other thing that we can do with this thing is to create a, you know, with the Newswire, we can create very professional um, fact check, edited content. I mean, this is something that we all need because we've all made mistakes and uh, uh, to have better fact checking, better, you know, editing and stuff like that is going to help push us, you know, just give us more credibility and more reliability because there's people who are afraid to share stuff because it's from a alternative media uh, website just because they're not sure if it's legit or not, you know. Um, so I think an organization like this can help give us more credibility and, and give us more of like a uh, more trust with uh, the general public, the general audience. Um, the other thing here to think about is uh, by pulling together our resources, we can we can be able to afford to say let's we, that we could send somebody like Ford maybe to a, some place on some side of the country where you know me as uh, with my company, the Anti Media, I can't really afford to send somebody a journalist um, and fly them out and put them in a hotel and have the equipment uh, to go to, you know, let's say Standing Rock, for instance, when that was going on. Uh, through an organization like this, we can kind of all share the burden of the costs, send a correspondent, and that correspondent can basically create content for all of us. Um, and then also we can have footage and photos and, uh, you know, we can, the, the organization can become self-sustainable by licensing the content that's created out of it as well. Uh, so, you know, I think these are all things to think about and I think this meeting maybe will be the time where we can start getting serious about coming together in this way and, um, you know, kind of lifting ourselves up. Uh, so, yeah, basically I just wanted to uh, follow up forward with, with just some, some maybe ideas on why this is a good idea. So uh, the second point I want to make is, um, I think I've just gotten to the realization that we can't count on any third parties to deliver our content. Uh, so you know we've all kind of built up an audience and earned an audience, and it's 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 in my opinion it's our audience that we've you know worked for and that we should have access to. Um, and then all of these third parties are now starting to get in the way. Of course, you got Facebook, the obvious one, Twitter, all these companies. You're going to have financial institutions. You're going to have you know even Patreon now is starting to get in the way of people who have you know earned um, pledges from their audience. Uh, uh, I could see in the future email services blocking people. Uh, so one, one other thing that we could possibly do with this organization or even just separately is we need to start figuring out how to cut out third parties between us delivering our content to our you know, audience. Uh, one way I think we could do this is by developing new tools ourselves because again, we don't want to depend on outside companies to, to use their tools because uh, one day they may decide that they don't want us to connect with our audience anymore or that this comp the company that we use, the tool we use may get bought out by another company. Facebook may buy out the company, Google may buy out the company and they may decide, hey, we don't want these people connecting with your audience. So uh, what I think we need to develop are tools to help us uh, direct, uh, directly connect 
Uh, one, one idea would be to make a, you know, like a simple WordPress plugin that would send text messages, push notifications to our audience as soon as we create content. Um, and then also uh, uh, apps and things like that that we can kind of create in-house together. Uh, again, going back to the idea of sharing the cost of these types of tools that we create because it would be hard for me to go, you know, spend the money to make that myself. But if we all kind of pitched in and did it, it would make it a lot easier. We can all share in these tools. Um, and, uh, you know, that's basically it. I think the, the main idea here is that we can't trust any company to connect us to our audience. We have to have a direct connection with in-house tools that we build ourselves um, or use, make use of open source tools that are already in existence. You know, some of them already exist. And, um, you know, the, the most sought after notification, I guess you would say right now, is the push notification. If someone gets a text message to their phone every time you post an article or a video or create a piece of content, I mean, that, that, that has replaced uh, email as like the most effective, you know, uh, uh, most likely to be opened uh, notification. And so that's where we should be looking. And then, uh, you know, looking at this idea of a social network, of course, I'm a huge fan of Minds. Um, Bill, if you're still listening, if we make this uh, association happen, we'd love to talk about maybe uh, uh, as Ford mentioned, making a new section on mines and uh, kind of having some type, of, some form of partnership here where we can help provide uh, a newswire for mines. That would be a really cool, um, uh, you know, boost for us and maybe a cool feature for you guys. Um, the other thing, though, a social network really is just people connecting, right? There's so, in-person social networks. Your group of friends that you have, your people at work. These are all social networks. Um, we can start thinking about social networking in an agnostic way where we can say, look, here's a piece of content. Again, going back to the idea of pushing it to someone's phone, make it easy for that person. If we make this content you know, platform agnostic where you get, a, you get a push notification, you get a piece of content, and if that person, like right now, what, what people do is they share it on Facebook. If someone thinks their friends may find interest in a piece of content, whether it's a meme or an article or a video, they share it on Facebook because they think their friends might be interested. We start making this content platform agnostic where they get a push to their phone, the content can be just text messaged or sent through Facebook Messenger or sent on WhatsApp or even posted back on Facebook, on Twitter. We make this content, you know, content uh, easily shareable, connect it directly to people's phones and make it so that they can just straight up forward it to their friends that they think really want to see it. I think this is the future because, you know, as, look, face it, there's Facebook fatigue. Like everybody I know, hates Facebook, but they still use it because everyone else is on there, right? But over time, I think, and, and there's already been, the uh, data is already showing Facebook is losing users, especially in the US, I mean, they're declining. And um, I'm not sure that there is going to be one big push where it was like MySpace to Facebook, where it just, everyone switches, switches over. I don't, I really don't think that's gonna happen. I think there's actually going to be like a splintering. Um, you know, you got kids using Instagram, Snapchat, uh, you know, people are going to mines, people are going on steam it, like there's going to be a splintering. I really don't know, I don't think there's going to be one shift to one new place. Um, as much as I would like there to be a huge shift over to mines because, you know, we've already built up a pretty good audience over there and I think there will be a big shift to mines, but not everybody. Um, I think it's important to make the content in a different way where it's just people, we, we connect direct to our audience, they get the content and they can share it easily to their outlet of choice, their platform of choice, to whatever social network they choose to use. Um, and I think this is gonna be the future for us for creating content. And also, again, it gets, a, it, gets, it gets us out of the crosshairs. It gets us out of the weak point, which is relying on creating kind of influencer profiles on these you know, third-party companies. That's, I think, uh, the way of the past, the way of the future is going to be just creating this content, letting people organically share it wherever they want, wherever they have their, you know, wherever they exist online, you know. Uh, and that's pretty much uh, all I want to say, guys. Thank you. All right, so we do have some people that are going to be speaking online a little bit. We're 